Hello everyone, my name is Mitz, and here we're back with Birth Me Code. Even though the game's already been finished and basically almost cleared out, there's still bonus content which I'm actually really intrigued about. I've already went through the entirety of the Patreon questions when I first beat through the ending, and like a dumbass just stopped talking all together. Why did. <laughs> I just like. Okay, that's a lot of process right now. Uh, what do I do now? Oh, bonus content. Yay! That's what I did. That's what I did. I didn't even do anything else. Literally did that, then I was just stuck silent, just thinking about how, what I should even say or think and all that. Oh, boy. There's actually a, even a few things, like, uh, to find out even. Like, the whole, like, nearly the entire lexicon has fell out everything, except for two terms. Which, all in all, I can only imagine goes to... You find here. The only gosh dang place we haven't been able to see. Now I tried to like, to see if there's a way to go to that off camera. Like, you know, like, you fill the flowchart so much to see if I can get to it, but no dice. No dice. Legitimately. Like, these, this scene, like, in the middle of the hacking helmets should be like, you know, when I'm, uh, like, we see cutscene of what Encora, like, you know, saw, like, Encora as her own person, like, did when she, you know, was looking around. So that must be weird. Oh, wait, I had an idea. Wasn't this where, where I'm, uh... Yeah, this is exactly where, uh, I guess NVIDIA, like, used the secret panel to, like, you know, talk to in course like that maybe like something happened that like knocked out or anything like that I mean like well actually no that wouldn't make, really make much sense would it because afterwards and Cora talked to in the video like it was nothing so she must not have seen you know what happened hmm it's actually so cool how like you know we're just playing as a person watching through the eyes of the helmets and they're still like a certain person entirely that's really interesting to think about. Well, back to it. That I'm, uh, I've been scouring this entire flowchart, mis mixing and matching, like, you know, different trust options, choices, all that jazz. And no, that doesn't work at all. No, it doesn't. Instead of, like, you know, making choices, like, you know, go down to here, then you immediately go up to here instead of all the way up here, it's actually more a completionist route. So you see these. I mentioned before, like, I think last, like, literally the finale, like, the last one episode. I'm talking about these, like, the, the solutions to the puzzles. You think of all of them. Like, so we have, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen puzzles, which we have to give we have to give the second answer to the puzzle. And in terms of, you know... Basically what I've seen so far, I've only did like three of them, and I at least... And based on how this puzzle laid out, and you know, the very last one... Oh, I got that one too, actually. Huh. Well, based on these two, it seems like no matter what, it was only one solution, so that's why it's... cool acid. Which I, I can understand why they call cool S, but I'm a uh, is it is it cool is that really what it's called the cool S like legitimately even though it has no origin do people just call it the cool S I usually like I well maybe just me just, I just put my own name on it I usually refer to it as super the Superman S but that's that's copyrighted infringement detail right <laughs> you're well we're not I'm not gonna focus on the puzzle stuff for now it'll be like the next one because I'm I just want to know I just really want to know what happened like when it and core got knocked out there so for here it's only gonna be the bonus content and the lexicon which I can already imagine is gonna clear stuff up a beam a beam me is basically the the name of the series like you know birthday code head at head as code the yeah, me is made of three sections a by and me a stands for something under, unclear as of now. Bi stands for bio, bichromatic, chromatic doors, which is the property of an object to have two colors. Uh, me stands for meridian, which is the vertical line crossing perpendicularly over the equator, which is horizontal. 
It is said to be able to measure eigen states, which can be imagined as multiple coexisting states of any element. Hmm, that's the whole. That's the basically the anagram of the entire series, which. Because I'm not a, a, a science nerd, I don't really know how to equate this. AI, me, you, me. Pseudo silence. AI stands for artificial intelligence. Oh, yeah, they're talking about, like, I'm a. Well, the, the Japanese kanji and stuff. It stands for a few more things, such as AI, the word for love in Japanese, combined with me in one word. It makes ami, which is the perfect, the present imperative of the word, the verb to love in French. The AI, me, and the you, me, are two different characters. However, they are both AIs. One is bound by the rules of the programming, while the other is bound by the rules of the universe. And someone is trying to break those rules. And I think we I think they already achieved that, actually. I guess, like, in the, the different names. Who was... Oh, yeah, Annie was a... Um, uh, Serbia, but... Alex is a... Uh, Alex is a teenager who has lived a decently hard life. Born after his parents had a divorce, he never met his father, which forced him to be the man in the house. Yet, his mother is poor, and so is he. He keeps in shape to protect his household, and he met with he met Annie through school. The two of them ended up using each other. Alex was used for their strength, and Annie was used for her money. Yet, they developed an interest in each other, but could never, never truly give in to their feelings. Never truly give in. Hmm. Annie's a teenager who's found nothing but comfort in her life. Yeah, I can already assume that based on how she acts. She's very quickly understood that her family was a privilege and that translated to a horrible upbringing. Very quick to control other people's lives, she was kicked out of the private school for her terrible behavior. In public school, she met Alex and subsequently used him without understanding what she felt for him. To this day, she harbors resentment for her family, and she had nothing due to her parents keeping, keeping everything for themselves. And she became a serial killer after that. So that's nice, and that in tow. There are still bombs, even though it's the exact same thing. With the advent of the internet, it's increasingly easier to fabricate all sorts of terrible explosives. In general, those bombs are able to cause great damage, but their safety when handling is mediocre at best. Five of them were used to class entire wings of the, of the school, but two of them malfunctioned and didn't even trigger. Their question is, where are those bombs now? Are they being used to the Kill Me game? So, like, hmm... What happened to the like the last two ones? I mentioned before, like a while like I think Itain mentioned about him uh, a gravitational like gravitational machine. But look at actually I'll look at that right now. Gravity machine. The gravity machine is still mostly a mystery. He's capable of outputting a large degree of gravity for whatever is contained inside, but the purposes for doing that are nebulous at best. It was an invention made by the MTS, but it seems to have been discarded in favor of another machine. I can't believe that's the mystery. A time was quick to leap onto such a, such a scrap of their technology, which she is still studying. So, like, it's messing around with... I can only guess because, even, like, it doesn't even give... It's giving vague hints in that, is I'm, uh... This gravity machine, like, messes with gravity? I can imagine, like, zero, maybe, like... Like, maybe shit gravity so you can, like, you know, like... You can just, like stand on the walls, the ceiling, stuff like that, rolling around without a care in the world. My gosh, that'd be terrifying. Just some, uh, hey, how'd you go, neighbor? What did you do to my wife yesterday, Tim? Wait, what? I know what you did yesterday. Guess what? Machine and, oh, there he goes, into space it goes. He goes. <laughs> Must be terrifying. If it does happen. Beliefs. Beliefs usually refer to something that's th something someone thinks is true without the necessity necessi 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 of any proof. God damn it, my S's are my biggest bane of my existence. Normally, belief can be true or untrue, but some beliefs can be turned into facts if proper proof is provided. In short, a belief is only a fact awaiting confirmation. Yeah, I can. Uh, yeah, I can, there's a lot of people who go with that about that. Like, I'm uh, facts, opinions usually. They go tan in tandem, and like even if they get challenged, belief anyway, it's either like I'm a, oh, what is that effect called? I'm a, I'm gonna call it the double down effect, where basically no like the confirmation, no the confirmation bias is completely completely different. Then uh, if you get proven wrong or like you know get challenged, like thinking like you know what your way of doing is, just you know wrong, they'll, they'll just people just double down on it and go like more aggressive towards you because they don't want to believe that they're wrong. 
it's kind of it, it really is would be a horrible feeling to him uh realize something you realize something you you thought was true your whole entire life was wrong but hmm this has come up before when I keep thinking about things like which is worse finding out that something you believed wholeheartedly and your entire life was completely god fucking wrong or there's a person you absolutely god forsaken fucking hate with all your being and no matter what they say no matter what they do they're always in the goddamn right I don't mean moral wise but literally everything they say or do is just you know quote unquote right to you like they may talk different things to you may seem like you know they do different things to you like they, they seem to have like you know literally everything to do is like for for the I guess you could say the greater good or something like that must be weird the deadly sins nowadays there are seven deadly sins lust governs all over manners and desires in general gluttony governs governs over wasteful consumption greed governs over, over desire for material possessions uh, yeah sloth governs our willful inactivity wrath governs our uncontrolled anger and hatred envy governs our covetous for what others possess and pride governs over the desire for selfish superiority. Originally, there were nine in total. Which of them were removed? I just just like how I just looked up the the, 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 seven, the seven deadly sins without him. Uh, like I looked him up and even like caught a glimpse of one of them, vainglory. But literally, the one I th one was the most important, at least to me, was insidia, and I did not get that at all. I did not see that at all. That was. Ugh. Wonder how I wonder how differently I would have thought if I found Encedia. And they found out about Encedia when they brought up the very gosh dang ending when they were outlining every single crime everyone did. Once again, I'm uh Luxury did the whole lust thing, so yeah. Gladney. I still like I, th I think I'm a uh, Gula's for Gladney is a bit of a stretch, but mm, I want that father I want my fatherly desires in th the game, like you know, right out. That's a bit weird. The phenomenon of deja vu has been widely accepted as being an error in memories. Is the act of remembering something as having already happened despite the fact it is impossible, giving a feeling of familiarity with the situation? In reality, deja vu could very well show that this very situation has already happened but in another history. If the universe is a flat circle and repeats itself forever, what are the events leading up to this very moment? Will they also repeat in exactly the same way? If that's the case, from where do these memories come? I don't believe I ever felt the whole thing in Deja Vu, but I keep hearing it being popped up and popped up every single time. Well, usually around. So I guess it has to be like, a, it's almost like some of the Mandela effect, where like so many groups of people, like, you know, have the exact same feelings or thoughts towards something. So it's kind of hard not to take advantage of it for stories. <laughs> for stories. Personality. The Enneagram personality is a model of the human psyche that has been vastly debated upon among fields of study as being incomplete or incorrect due to lack of analysis. It is supposed to categorize human personalities to try and rationalize how someone would think in a given situation. The truth of the matter is that it's still unclear if it's practical or only theory, and yet it has yet to be widely accepted within the psychological studies in their academic communities. Hmm. Epiphany. An epiphany is a moment of sudden and striking realization. I think I had a few times of that. Yeah, actually, the very first epiphany I had got me a gosh dang anger ball. Anger ball. <laughs> An epiphany is a moment of sudden and striking realization. It occurs when the brain suddenly makes a connection of two different ideas together in order to produce a third one. Oh, yes, that kind of thing when I go through stories and that, no matter what it is. Oh, that's such a, just a magnificent feeling. I need my dopamine brain. Do it. <laughs> Gosh. It's also said to be a manifestation of a divine being which doesn't operate under the laws of nature. The latter definition is more biblical in origin, while the former is more scientific. The two of them carry the same meaning, though, of manifestation. The context of the story is an irreversible gain of knowledge from which there's no coming back. <laughs> Oh yeah, the backstories for um, uh, a real's character. A real is a teacher who has a who has a minor in psychology. I don't know if I I hmm, don't think I've seen that in her speech in that. She's said to be married despite being well over thirty years old, and she often lies about her age in order to feel younger. 
She is a bit of a greedy streak given that she desires things she cannot have. A better job, for one, but also a companion for life. Ugh. All the men she finds of her age disgust her, to the point where she'd rather seek out younger boys. Her greed also stems from the fact she wants things without losing any. Hmm. Eternal Return. The time was talking about this. The theory of the Eternal Return has its roots in the origins and the ends of the universe. It's also one of the many ways the universe thought to bring itself to its end. Oh. They call it the, they call it the Big Crunch. Where the universe will shrink back to a singular space, then cause it to undergo the Big Bang all over again. Oh, okay, then I, I, I glossed over that then when I was understanding it. So it's basically just a whole gosh dang repeat. Of the universe itself. Hmm. Then cause itself to undergo the Big Bang all over again, dispersing its energy in the same fashion it had, had done before the Big Crunch. It is called the Eternal Return because the universe returns to its original form of infinite energy in infinitely small space, causing a cycle that cannot be broken as long as things go exactly the same. So I guess by the context of how she was, uh, time was talking about the Eternal Return, basically, the, like, every single time, like, for example, when I went through this the very first time from beginning to, like, the first dead end where NVIDIA was killed off in the, the vote first, that I'm, uh, me, like, dying there from, uh, Ira and Serbia are, uh, hmm, what is it? That, uh, when I go and start over again and, and go down a different route, it literally, the universe just, like, I'm, uh, I guess technically in that context, my consciousness is gone and dead, but then I'm, uh, suddenly... Like, when the universe ends and it comes back again, this whole entire process starts up again until we get to this exact point in time, like, you know, with different, small different changes depending on that, and then going down different paths altogether. Uh, and then any information gleaned from the, the past, like, you know, from the first run to the next universe, can carry over. I mean, if the universe can, like, you know, go and, like, time and space are just, you know, I mean, like, time, no matter what, is always going to be the same, and time and space, space is very moldable, or it seems like, anyway, since the universe keeps and keeps and keeps on expanding and expanding ever again. But yeah, I can totally see this happening. It's like very good hard, sard, hard snard fiction, hard science fiction. A time is a teenager who has more or less given up on life. His favorite hobbies include video games, especially rather disturbing or depressing ones. Well, that's a mood. <laughs> oh god, I, 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 I've seen and, and heard so many depressing stories. His dad is a researcher and he gets paid very well, giving him a fairly comfortable lifestyle. Unfortunately, his father is also often absent from home and doesn't really know what Itain is up to. Using the money he gets, Itain maintains multiple websites and runs a small trafficking ring for children. Especially those who bully him, whom he wants to dispense justice upon. Okay, so I'm, uh, I was wondering exactly what his goddamn crime was, like from when we, we saw his vision, and Jesus Christ, that's... My... my fucking god. A trafficking ring. At your own school... goddamn. I guess why people, these, why all these people like came and joined the, the childhood mafia of this school. Oh yeah, the vats too. Like so, like I'm uh. They said it before that I'm uh basically like, maybe like all these people actually came from uh, the year 2002 and like the stasis pods, like you know kept them going and then like. I guess they went on and off, like, you know, taking out of the pods, like, you know, they're not unconscious, and then back in again, and on and off, until, um, uh, they were on the same age, I think that's what they mentioned before. Like, you know, they keep the ages the same, consistent. I guess that'll make things less... extrudious. When, I'm uh, things inevitably happen. Well, if, like, if they keep trying to keep the same ages, and they're trying to go back to the lives, you know, the, the guy, the pe you know, the, the, the kids had, the teenagers. I'm just gonna assume they're teenagers because, you know, school. That, this means to be coming back, like, you know, like, 12 years later in life. And, you know, you're still looking like a teenager, like, everything and all. That or, you know, 
this is what they look like in this adu as adults. Avery, Avery Rita is like you know Avery's whole condition is you know the same because you know she's older she's she can you can pull that off. Don't know about teenagers though. It's kind of like that that I'm uh I guess small nitpicking or plot contrivance was brought up that was in a dang and rump of the whole thing. What's even lampshade in, in the second game? And now I'm getting reminded of uh, Flight and Navigate. That, that the whole movie's concept is based off that whole idea, just traveling in space time and like you know the well flight and navigator sense is almost similar to him uh interstellars which i don't even know if that's a spoiler or not um if you go into a with the speed of light concept like if you if you're in a spaceship and like you know going around like you know traveling fast in the space and going back to earth like it may seem like a few minutes or a few days to you but maybe like many years or decades have passed for everyone on on earth it's a weird thing to think about. On here, it just seems like everything's going slow and normal, and then up there, just going rapid fire, rapid fire fast. Perspective ships. Ex Machina. The Ex Machina, or EM, is an artificial body made to closely resemble that of a human being. One can refer to them as an android, but they have multiple functions androids might not normally have. They are still prototypes, and most of them aren't even given a proper appearance befitting of a human being yet. The additional function is to be a vessel for God. I doubt we're God, though. Unless it's us, the audience is somehow like God, but that's too narcissistic to think about. I still like the whole th the idea, though, of a, just some, this, I guess, overarching being almost. Like helping along in a weird way, like that's shown like virtue's less reward. Well, briefly touched upon in that, and I guess <laughs> the most barest hint of it in the third game, which mm, yeah, I don't think it really did a good job of that. And God, God is the spiritual entity governing over creation, the Catholic religion. The existence of God has been heavily been debated, and is yet impossible to prove to this day. Though both sides of the argument always provide their sh fair share of proof, or lack thereof. Ultimately, what one believes is, is and is their own business, but many also believe God isn't an entity, but rather a force. The point where humanity could be referred to as God, or life itself, what it might be. God is supposedly omni omnipresent, omnipotent. Hmm. I've seen mostly a. Um, uh... Oh boy, I'm gonna talk about religion here. But I'm, uh, I've mostly have only heard of, um, uh, I guess, logical side of the argument because I don't know if I exactly believe in like emotion too much. Well, the first thing that comes to a person I like or a character I like, it just just logic goes almost out the window, <laughs> almost basically. <laughs> I mean, look at Nvidia. <laughs> Even though he pulled a gosh dang gun and, ki and like you know made everyone shoot him, or I guess that was Mark technically, but I don't know how to feel about it now. I I don't even know like which is to believe as a Mark or Marco. But Jesus, the very second meeting him, and then to the very end, I still love him. He's just great. But uh, I don't. I wonder if there's like anything logical to talk about, like you know, to like to talk about God anyway. I guess it all comes back to a matter of faith. Like even even as a, even as the same thing as a uh, faith in science and all that kind of jazz. Yeah, because sometimes like I'm a, uh, there can be even a lot of doubt even going into like a science, like not everything is going to be the same, I guess it's almost like, hey guess what guys, guess what I'm talking about now, Schrodinger's cat, which I already know is going to be bombarded to everyone's minds every single time if you guys please, if you've seen even lick, lick nor hair of Virtue's Last Resort Board, which I'm, if you haven't played it by now, then why, why have you watched up all the way to this point? Why are you watching a bonus episode of a game and which is inspired by it? But, hmm. I haven't heard many, like, I guess, emotional things about, like, you know, religion and, like, faith. I guess mostly because I just don't see a lot of... Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going on a whole thing about religion. So, I'm, uh... I should probably move on before I anger people. <laughs> anyone over that? I'm great at pen mill. 
Uh, it was Greta or Hannah, the person. I'm gonna assume Hannah is the one we're playing. Greta is Hannah's twin sister. The two girls attended the highest since Delorme Polyvalent High School. Okay, hold on. Okay, no. The high school is is on the list. I will get to that when we get to it. And they both value each other equally. However, Gre Greta Penmail cares for Hannah even more than Hannah cares for her, to the point where she will often stalk her to check if anything dangerous is happening to her. That's how she learned Hannah was Pandora, the leader of my emptiness. She, thought was she saw that as danger and wanted to stop it, but... Oh, so Greta's in Korra, actually. Oh yeah, so it doesn't mean like Hannah technically was always going to be waiting in the in the, the white pad deduction room, like in the very last one. She was always waiting there. That's why when we came up there and went up there, things went horrifically bad. Like they said that how it crushed us after Encore got there. And they didn't recognize each other. Or somehow did like it switch over to like and even like Gretel or I guess Hannah didn't recognize like you know Greta based on like you know what she looked like or at least the clothes she was wearing anyway unless well they said all the clothes like you know they kept in the kidnapping well those from us who we we thought the mastermind so basically anything's up in the air for that in regards to that but uh, hmm I guess they didn't know about that since you know they recognized the clothing then. Oh yeah, the second group. So the first group was, um, uh... Oh, I have an idea. So the first group is all about, um, uh... I guess the real people going about through it. And the second group is basically the ex machinas, the, the robot androids with a scan of, like, people's personalities. And also the whole experiment was, like, a test, like... Like, trying to combine different consciousnesses into one singular thing, I can only assume. And then transferring all that into a normal person. That is all transferred to our robot body, which no, I don't know if I can. Well, I don't. I, I didn't hear Lichner hair that kind of stuff. Ex Machina's. You didn't see any other other people in that second group besides like you know their helmets. So I'm gonna assume they're all like robots. Second group and like I'm uh. I'm gonna assume the things. No, when we were in the hacking helmets and looking at hacking other people's things, we were actually referring like referring to another alternate, like we're going to the other timeline, which is recreating the exact same thing happening in hours, like right down to the bone, like everyone's helmets being the same. Oh gosh, actually, that's that's actually really cool. So like the other wing, it's a it's a recreation of the high the high school, I think it was high school, yeah high school, recreation of different wings. Well, the same wing twice over, and then it transfers any information seen from the first group to the second, where we are watching from the hacking helmets. That's cool. Hannah Penmill. Hannah is Greta's twin sister. The two girls attend the height, and they both value each other equally. However, she's also a little independent sometimes, and she tends to do her own things too. That's why she's Pandora, the leader of my emptiness. Unfortunately, her quick and empty cruising through life was cut short by the Kill Me game. Her quick and easy cruise there was coming for the Kill Me game. The sister had managed to stop her from doing all these things. I'm just wondering, was like Hannah Pinmill actually part of the second group? Like the hacking? Or we we were again another group entirely? It's like, oh boy, even like so many bad things happened to both girls then. So it's either like we like transfer body to a re like transfer consciousness so that you know I'm uh, I guess as our code name Pandora to now into this body of like I guess this will be a younger version of a Tyne. Like a real human body, but no, I doubt that. Or just an actual robot machine. Yeah. I think I can buy that. Uh, here's the high school. Highest in Delorme. The secondary school set in Quebec, Canada, has four wings which all have different purposes. Wing A contains all the classes through grades 3 to 4 or 5. 
Wing B is the administrative wing and has a, ca and it has a cafeteria. Wing C is made up of a gymnasium that deals with sports, sports, and Wing D contains all special and manual training. Special and manual training. There's also a second floor, but it's not explored or mentioned in the game at all. Please note that in this case, grades 3, 4, and 5 refer to the equivalent of grades 9, 10, 11 in high school. I don't know much about Canadian culture then, because that just... <laughs> Just, hey, we're in grades three, four, and five, uh, but you're not shit. We're you're teenagers. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you tiny eco film. I'm curious about her. Help. Yeah. Yeah, we're. I'm just re going over like the different terminology scene. Oh yeah, like I guess like a designated name. It's actually an anagram of a tiny eco film. Somehow there's an a Y in there somehow. Also, the I I kind of joke just it came to me just <laughs> the initials of a tiny good film or I I God damn it I'm just looking into that too much Lucille Boys Jolie the one I discriminated against this name her name many times before Lucille was a cheerful girl with scholarship issues despite her father being the principal of school she flung classes not to be held back two years still her father loved her and shot her with the machines for her hobbies. Which are all centered around tinkering. Unfortunately, her father was kind of murderer scandal. Despite spending thousands of hours reading the dictionary, it didn't make her any smarter, and she decided to act in the way she knew how, by taking revenge on the school itself for allowing that to happen to her. I'm also wondering, Miracle Moon, like Jesus, did you? I'm pretty sure you had to look look through a dictionary so many different times just to learn, like I guess not even for like Ghoul's character, but also every single flowchart is just. Every single element, like the novel sections, I guess the split sections too, they all, like, like I guess up here they deal with, like, you know, different things for me. Memento, me, meeting, just the first two letters of M-E, maybe I already said that before. Mensalians, what even is that? Menora, Memit, Mementic, Medacity, Meticulous, Merger, Memoridim, Mediate, Mediator, Melancholy. I can only imagine, like, I don't even know what the definition of the words be, but they. they, sh they could, Jesus, they, I'm wondering what they. I guess they should be good, sh like, scene titles. Like, Jesus. And down here, it's also, like, the same thing for the, the us symbol, though. Like, us, usual, useful, usurper, username, you since, assure, then I guess it goes back to the me's, me son. Mecha side and memories and the metro. I heard talk about that in the, in the Discord. All that kind of stuff. Okay, we're back to it. Then the Mandela effect. I think we already looked at this. Mandela effect is a term popularized in the 2010 denoting false memories. It comes from the widespread belief Nelson Mandela died in the 80s, when in fact he had lived far longer than that. Many people believe it is a sign of alternate timelines. That it was much more likely they are errors in memories as a result of suggestibility or general misinformation. The chances of those memories come from an alternate itself are pretty slim, if none. In the context of this game, it's not. <laughs> Ooh, Marco. Marco was a postgraduate student of the field of Neomatics in the University of Montreal. Neomatics. I'm curious. Just gonna do a not so subtle quick Google search of what nomadics are. Nomadics of understanding. Okay, nomadics field instead of just the word nomadics. Okay, I'm not getting anything for that. Uh, Neomatic... Neomatics major. Because college. Ah, just, de just dealing dealing with philosophy. That makes sense. I just lo- yeah. <laughs> In general, he has a light tone and likes to joke around a lot. Well, then he's the type of guy- he's the great guy then. Even when things are dead serious. Yes. 
god, yes. His passion for all things scientific began when he was around the age of eight, when computers were still fairly new. In recent years, he began conducting strange activities with no discernible goals but to see how far he could push his discovery of technology. He wouldn't get far without a tine. Hmm. Mark Tremblay. Oh yeah, he's the per actually the real person inside the NVIDIA's helmet, the brown-haired guy. Mark's family is fa fairly numerous. His dad and his mom have seven children, six of them are girls, all older than Mark. It's difficult for him to make friends with boys, but he managed to get along with a couple of them. They like to play laser tags at the Laser Dome, but due to how far the establishment is, he doesn't get to do it often. Dang. To avoid his father being wrongfully imprisoned as a result of the kid's murder, Mark has had to falsify documents which pinned, pinned it onto the other likely suspect at the time. So he somehow got hands on the documents? Huh. Also, like, since he likes laser tag so much, I can only imagine he was also, like, it's like the clothes thing where, 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 you know, where the kidnap from happened. He was literally just, like, with his family, like, doing laser tag, and then like, suddenly in the darkness, as the, all the lights of pew-pews going around, the dark, neo-lit grounds of, you know, just whatever, if we, you know, environment it is in the dark, dimly lit area, someone just chloroform ragged him and just carried him off, and it's just family just devastated, like, Jesus. My Emptiness. Originally, a group of former students wishing to do as they pleased without worrying over life and its hardships. Have been changed to a little school mafia where the teacher, no, the leader, gave tasks to perform and selected who would do them based on what kind of freestyle of life they wanted to pursue. While well, everyone's job was to merely enjoy what they ordinarily couldn't do to their leisure, the leader's job was to clean up after them. It all got out of hand when the leader started manipulating it into doing her bidding in order to have an easy life, such as the removal of superior students or manipulation of grades. So, Hannah Penmill managed to get things out of it. She's the one person, I guess, who got out of this scot-free. Well, not exactly scot-free. Because, uh, what happened to, uh, Greta with, uh, Hope. Yay. Myth of Pandora. Pandora is said to be the first human woman who was created by Hephaestus on demand of Zeus. Each god co cooperated by giving her, her unique gifts, hence the name of All Gifted. Oh yeah, that's what it translates to. The myth of Pandora's box, or Pandora's jar, deals with her opening a jar in which all the evils of the world were contained. Upon realizing what she had done, closing the box again, hence the name All Giving, unfortunately, it was all too late, leaving only hope trapped inside. The context of the story, Panda, Pandora, I just, Panda, that, oh my god, Panda, oh my god. <laughs> Goddamn slip of the tongue, and it still that makes goddamn sense. Jesus! P Pandora is nothing more than a symbolic name. Yeah. Oh, yay, Nico Hope. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Nico's a teenager who doesn't seem to really understand the reach his actions can have. Yeah. The only thing he's focused on is, him, is him and himself, and nothing else. His pleasure comes above all else, whether it's comfort or physical affairs. Yay. In truth, he lives alone, even though he doesn't have the right to do so. He lives a goddamn alone? With no paternal or maternal figure to watch over him, he learned how to appeal to people due to his favorite trait, cuteness. Yay. Unfortunately, he's also a bad tendency to go a little too far with girls. Some of those times didn't go well for him. Good. Sally and Test, yeah. Okay, I, I didn't... Hmm. Sally and Tess is a psychological test used in developmental psychology to measure someone's ability to attribute false beliefs to others. Sally has a marble basket while Anne has a box. Sally puts her, mar her marble in her basket and then she leaves. Anne takes the marble out and puts it in her box instead. When Sally comes back, does she check the basket or the box to have her marble? The correct answer is to say the basket, but what you know may influence the answer. Hmm. I still don't exactly know what test all all about. I guess that, hmm. It's something to do with the story. I don't, a psychological test, like, they gave this whole same story, like, I guess people with, like, developmental, like, disorders, like, autism, stuff like that, like, they're taught it. We're supposed to, like, be told, like, I'm, uh, I would, like, they're supposed to say the basket. Oh, so since like, because of the context of the story, and you're giving the like giving the story to them. Uh... 
Oh, but since we're given, like, context... And this is, this whole story is given to, like, someone, I guess, autism or Asperger's. They would say the box, because that's where, the, the, that's where Anne, just, Anne moved the marble to. But how would Sally even know that? Ah, that makes sense now. Just realizing it did the almost, I think it did the exact same, almost similar thing. Just going back while I had to keep... When I was going, th when, when I first went through, uh... When we going down to Pandora's True, you know, perspective shift, when we entered the code in the box, I remarked that why, why Nico, or, you know, I'm, uh... I guess, I guess technically Luxuria Gula, why they weren't questioning, how, like, you know, our know-how so far. Yet I'm, uh, they were literally just confusing and used to things, that, like, so gosh dang early on. It must have been it. Oh boy, context. Yay. The cool S. Around the birth of the internet, many people have led to a wild goose chase in order to know where the symbol comes from. Some, di some say it's related to various things, but no one has really found the origins of the cool S. It has been drawn everywhere, in notebooks, on walls of graffiti, and it's even been part of works of art. By the way, everywhere also means all over the world, too. It's a total mystery coming from as far back as the 1890s. The, this cool S looks like a little like the L of an empty S. Hmm. Yeah, just basically like, like how the, this, how my, this game centers around it. I can totally imagine it being like a symbol for a, I guess either like a cult or like a mafia organization. I can totally buy that. I literally just can't. I literally can. They're the new Illuminatis. The dead boy. The dead boy. Nobody really knows the identity of the boy who was killed really was. The information was kept secret by the police, and it's unclear to at my emptiness which debt set off the investigation. Of course, the boy's killer definitely knows who it is, but it's doubtful they'll ever speak about it. Is it like the student who was killed off the newspaper? Which death set off the investigation? Oh, I was talking about him, uh, the, the different Sira killings that Serbia did. And then the police found out about like a few of them, and the boy was most. Where when was the where was the boy like mentioned in the story or the context of it? The empty S. A mysterious group of researchers who study various subjects of pseudoscience. Very little has ever been known about them, as they operate very quickly. Should any of their secrets leave the, leave the nest, they're watching you though. Gosh dang it, I guess they're gonna have a hard time doing the less it docks because I, not, I don't have a camera set up anyway. I don't have a camera at all. The helmets. The strange helmets the group of my emptiness has been adorned with have multiple purposes. They can act as a middleman between the head and the outside world. There's a function to transform the exterior camera's capture into brain waves, which is aimed to cure blindness. Hmm. Middleman between the head and the outside world. Yeah, I can see that. Oh, is that the reason how I'm, uh... Oh, is that how Ancora, when she went into my uh, the room with, you know, the astrological signs of the garden, like, even we, like, she was even able to figure out, like, the red and green color blindness easily, which picked it out because literally the helmets even are equipped into her head as well. Oh, brainwaves, yeah, that makes sense. Huh. They're very unwieldy, and their uses have been limited so far. They're used as batteries for ex machinas. Ah, uh, the body can operate by itself for 39 minutes if it wears a helmet for 6 hours. They can also be used to copy memories, and of course, they can also explode. So I guess that's very second the batteries. The second group of the ex machinas are used. Unless everyone here actually is like, you know, an ex machina, both the first and second group. And the, all the human counterparts, the, actually all the the characters here, and the Luxuria, Gula, and all that people. They're like in a status pause, they're just copied over. I can see that. I guess like, does that mean like... That, or, hmm. It could be humans, or like ex machinas with like, you know splurred out blood mechanics in their home bodies. Eh, either way. 
Number 39. This number stands for quite a lot of things, but within the context of this story, here are the most important things. Is the atomic number of Ethereum, or Y. The symbol Y has been used before to show branching paths coming from a singular trunk as all well the human choices. Hmm. The most commonly I've like heard of like a branching path of a river, but not so much as a branch. And also getting reminded of them, uh, Phoenix Wright. Them, uh. Ah, oh, forget this, what, the, what that sword was called. The Seven Branch Sword. It's a Shicho sheet, sword, I think that's how you, how you say how it is. I probably butchered its pronunciation because I. Both my speech patterns are completely terrible and I don't speak Japanese too much. Well, I don't speak Japanese at all. Why do I even say that? <laughs> Ethereum is used in LYP batteries and in larger and in rather large amount within the artificial androids of the story. I swear, I have read I read the number this this exact lexicon before, and I don't think I mentioned anything about androids. Like I read it like on and off between I guess playing through it. I never heard it mentioned artificial androids. That are completely glossed over, which at this point I will be willing to believe. Is also Japanese slang for thank you, due to three being san, thank you 999, and nine being q. As for who is being thanked and who is thanking, that is unclear. I'm guessing, like, even in 999, like, you know, they also just do, like, you know, how three is pronounced in san. Do they, do they literally, was Santa's nickname there also Santa just because I'm, uh, san is three, but also I'm like Santa Claus. Oh, I really love that line too much. Did you hear? I'm Santa Claus. It's time for me to make a dream come true. Jesus Christ, I love that line so goddamn much. Jeez. I got shivers on my f I keep getting shivers on my spine every single time I hear it. The voice actor did a good job. Also, the line is really great. I zone out, jeez. The Tinkerbell Effect. The Tinkerbell Effect refers to something that exists only due to people's belief. For example, if everyone believed that money is worthwhile to own, then money would be worthwhile to own. And it is! The first Tinkerbell effect is the same thing, but believing in something means it no longer exists. For instance, safety while driving no longer exists if everyone believes roads are safe, and no longer follow the proper procedures for said safety. Do you believe in yourself? Do others believe in you? I don't believe in myself, so I don't know how to believe in others. But I guess even like that, it's like almost like... I guess even to take the road metaphor, it's usually just all about, hey, we're gonna all follow this law, and if you don't do it and conform to it, people are gonna be in danger, and you're gonna get arrested for it. I guess this is literally just what, like, laws, societal norms, and all that are. Even the belief of uh, murder bad sort of thing. And it's even, like, the concept of justice and, like, you know, punishments. All might conform down to, like, different things, because no one, no one's belief is going to be completely or going to be completely encompassed in a, in a whole governmental, governmental body. And I don't really think it should, otherwise it's a whole gosh dang dictatorship. Well, among a group. Well, I guess that means it's like you're among like-minded like, like -minded people, but you don't have that spice of variety. But you need to be in good terms with each other to do that. And if your beliefs, hmm. I wonder, if someone's beliefs are too, like, you know, too out of sync, is, can there even can you make friends with them? I'm wondering. And so far, the friends I made are mostly just some. Uh, I guess we just speak our minds most most of all, and now I certainly do. I mean, look at me, just talking right here, yay! I wonder, if, I wonder if people have that, like making friends with people who like don't have much, very different beliefs. Because I know you only make friends when you only like you know have very you know similarities. I wonder how much you can stretch that similarities bar thin. I'm just curious. Well, I guess I guess it just goes the, back to the point of I'm, uh, it's either your friend or just someone you just mildly hate because your beliefs are so gosh dang different. You just don't understand each other. If they don't understand, then I'm, uh, you get angry. Yeah. Trust. Trust is an acronym standing for television relay using small terminals, which originally was an experiment to promote satellites used for broadcasting. It was a large experiment published in 1975, and to this day, satellites do most of the work associated with television, smartphones, and other devices. Of course, the helmets don't use a satellite to transmit the signals between themselves, but other receptors powered by a local energy generator. 
so that the signal never leaves the experimental grounds. Hmm. I wonder where the... Uh, I doubt it that the reactor is like the same thing. Jeez, I'm, I'm pretty sure I must have read through this at some point. Oh god, if I, I read through some of these already before, again, some of them I don't remember. Gosh dang it, this all on me, because my memory is shit. <laughs> I don't even remember the things that comes to my mouth. I just have a generalized memory. Werewolf, Werewolf, or Mafia, is a competitive game involving deaths by majority vote. Hmm, I wonder where I heard that before. It's a game with a day and night cycle, when the majority is the power during the day, and the minority is the power during the night. The primary, uh, primary, prim, primary goal of the game is to pin an uninformed majority against an informed minority to see which side can outsmart the other. Generally speaking, it is impossible to really figure out the minority without any loss, so some trial and error makes the initial phases a, a gamble. Tricking people into giving this those away is fun too. Yeah, it is actually. It's really great. Oh, I remember playing through Mafia in high school, and literally like, uh, I didn't play it smart. I would just like, I just want to mess with things. Just, ugh. Was basically a goddamn Kokichi there, just messing with things. Like, I remember a few times, like, oh yeah, I think the very first round, I was the detective, and my friend who sat next to me was the doctor. So we had a, you know, a very informed group, actually. That was pretty cool. That was actually really fun. And the next game, I was um, uh, just a normal person, and then a that round, I distinctly remember saying, "Hey guys, guess what? I'm part of the mafia." I just seen, I just leaned back and did, just did nothing. Oh boy, I did not absolutely nothing. Even when the first people started calling out, like, "I'm a, yeah, let's just kill him off. We gotta make sure it's right." Instead of just saying, "Like, hey, so why are you suggesting that first off? Are you, t are you really just taking my, by, me by my word? Huh? That's very suspicious of you." Uh, I was having too much fun with that. Mm hmm. But I'm honestly curious to see, like, I guess it was a big expectation in my head, which, oh yay, expectations lead to things, which is probably why I got a bit mad. Uh, yeah, I was, expecting, I was giving, I was pushing my expectations onto your game. Ugh. I was thinking, about, like, me and my friend were talking about this sort of thing, about um, uh, how to be if a, a, like a, a mystery game or a story would be if you were the culprit and you're, like, covering a crime. Like... How'd that go about? I'm giving the context like these games where you've been dinging around, but like my first thought was I'm uh, I guess even like V3's case, it was taking mechanics from there, you would have so many lying, li lying bullets mechanics in that. It's like, you know, push your own thing. I'm actually really curious to see how it is. How'd that work? I guess the only way you can actually have a compelling story with that sort of thing is also like how both this game and I guess how um, uh, it was addressed and I guess, hmm, I guess it's a spoiler, but yeah, it's a spoiler. How it was, uh, I guess, like delved in and like I'm a uh, Dink and Rompo was I'm a, uh, you're the culprit, you're like, one, you're one of the culprits or supposedly one of the culprits, but you're also trying to figure something else out. Like, uh, the first case of V3 was basically, you're the culprit, but um, uh, you're trying to figure out who the mastermind is so you can kill them off and make sure no one else dies. The whole twist there in itself was great because literally you were the culprit, but literally all your motivations, even when you're inside the, the, your own head, it all made goddamn sense. Oh boy, I was blown away by that. I guess here it takes some, this game took some more warming up too. Yep, expectations of this world are the biggest thing of all. And I think it's all of them. I guess for the last two things. Which, I guess next time I'll, like, I'll be going through this game at my own pace to get through all these puzzles. That are all just... Walk through them. Although, I actually want to see how I can do that. Although I'm probably leading more to the walkthrough side. For the next one. Just see this... So hidden thing. I guess now I'll just like go down the I'll just I'll transfer over to like the the bonus questions. 
where my I read I just read through without any guards to that so I'll just go I'll just cut to that my first initial reaction to that because I can't do it I honestly just can't do it justice it's great it's honestly great so I'm gonna find time watching this as I am playing it my god I just did my own goddamn tagline Patron questions one. Locked bonuses. The following is not canon content. Oh boy, okay, and I just ripped out my headphones in excitement. Yay! <laughs> the character's words are genuine and will be coherent with their psyches. Their psyches. Not canon content, but the character's words are genuine and will be coherent with their psyches. So we just need a few letters for some of you. Oh, hi. They want you to answer the questions. I know it may sound like a bother to you all, but we'll have to do that. Yeah, you don't answer anything. You don't have to answer anything, huh? It's just us. This is cool. <laughs> sounds like a nice life for you, doesn't it? Just sitting in a comfy chair. I'm not really a character from this story. I'm just the creator. <laughs> you put yourself into the game. You'd be right then, I don't have to answer those questions. Who's going first? Ah, oh, wait, let's just go in order. We have questions from July 20, 2019 up to April 20th to answer. That's almost an entire year of Patreon questions. The first question is... Oh boy, how many? If you were up against one of your parents in a Prisoner's Dilemma game, what would you choose, ally or betray? Depends on the parent. That one's for you, Serbia. <laughs> Ah, oh, fuck, I'm going first! It's annoying, but maybe they recognized I'm the most important of the bunch. Alright then. First of all, what the hell is a prisoner's dilemma? Oh god. It's kinda hard to explain quickly, so let's just keep it simple. Let's say there are a rabbit and a lion. Both of them are told the same thing, separately. <sighs> They're told that they can either tell on each other's crime, or clam up. Oh my gosh, there's so many references. Yeah, I, lo oh, I love this. This this aspect from Virtue's Last Reward is great. They're told that they can either tell each other's crime or claim up. If both of them say nothing, it'll be hard to pin anything directly on them. So, they'll only serve prison for one year. They both chose to ally, then. However, if one of them tells on the other, they get to go completely scot-free, except their companions will eat, will eat prison pudding for the next 60 years. But that won't really be their problem, since they'll have no punishment for picking Betray. Now, both of them tell on each other. Nothing can be done for them. They'll both have to serve prison for the next 12 years. Obviously, that's not something either the rabbit or the lion wants. So there, so there are four outcomes. Both clean up and serve one year, one tells the other and gets away with it, one gets told on and serves six years, and both tell on each other and serve twelve. Okay, I get it. What kind of person came up with that dumb shit? Whatever. I know those self-centered assholes will pick a betray then, so really, I don't have a choice, do I? Anyway, anyone who would pick an ally is a real idiot. That's why I know my parents would pick a betray. Because they aren't idiots. And that's why I had to pick it too, because I'm not gonna let those assholes get away with it. If I'm falling down, they're falling down with me. Okay, that's one way to look at it. I honestly don't know what I would do. I just don't. I guess I'll just choose ally. Very interesting. See? That wasn't so bad now, was it? On to the next question. Hmm. It seems that some of those quote questions are related to another event entirely. Let's skip those and come back to them in the relevant installment. Relevant installment? Next up is NVIDIA. Ooh boy! You win the lottery, apparently. What? Oh, lucky me. How am I- how? Am I rich? No, no, you just got two questions to answer. Let's go. The first one asks, will you be my wife? <laughs> 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 uh, 
as for what that means, well, it's when people enjoy fictional works a lot and decide that one of the girls in it is to be their point of interest. I don't think that's right. It's some kind of anime thing, I guess. But in this case, it's not waifu, it's husbando. <laughs> like some kind of wife, but not really. A husbando. It's basically wife, pronounced with a Japanese accent. Oh, I thought they asked if I would be their Wi-Fi. <laughs> yes! Yes! I made this goddamn joke with my friends! I made my Wi-Fi password my waifu password! <laughs> It's already bad enough that some people compare me to graphics card already, even though the graphics card took their name from the Sin 2. <laughs> oh boy. But I don't think I fit the bill for that kind of thing. Now I'm remembering the goddamn fucking joke on the Twitter basically saying, hey, just like. <laughs> Some of the characters being told, like, you know, that like, someone had a crush on them. And the video was, yeet. Or something along those lines. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think I feel a bill for that kind of thing. I'm not exactly equipped for that, unless you want to uh, put a skirt on me, but I probably won't rock that out too well. Wait, implying skirts are for girls is sex, isn't it? <laughs> um, that's why there's both skirts and kilts. And literally, no matter what anyone says, everything's gonna become offensive, so at this point, just don't even worry about it. I just meant to say that it wouldn't compliment me, sorry. All my sisters wear skirts, so I guess it just came naturally. Besides, if I'd be a waifu, I'd have to be fictional too. It's a silly notion. I'm not gonna comment on that. <laughs> and for the second question, do you like military stuff? I mean, like guns? I'll have a pass on that one. No thank- No tanks! <laughs> I don't think any of that's an AK with me. This is why he's best boy. <laughs> I understand. You had to take a shot for your question, right? Hopefully it won't be your last ditch effort. <sighs> I guess Camo's pretty alright, though. What? I can't make everything into a pun. Great we, have, great, we have three questions done. Let's see the next one is for Sir Bia again. Yay, look at that! She's so popular! Fucking hell, really? <laughs> yeah. They ask, will you be my waifu? That question again? Holy fuck. <laughs> fuck! No! Get out of my sight, you goddamn poor peasants! You heard the explanation, right? Damn right I did. So anyway, Patron, do you ask that to every single girl you meet? <laughs> you sound like the kind of guy who would. Who would. A big loser. <laughs> no, I can't be your wife because I'm not. I'm already dating somebody. Why did you think someone like me would be the free? Aesthetic. Get real, I'm not like one of those M animu girls. <laughs> Maybe you used to spawn those trash bags because only for their tits, but I'm, uh, but I'm better than that. Oh, trying to insult those who are asking questions too much. Well, he asked me, so clearly they knew what they were in for. I bet those masochists want me to step on them too. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. Disgusting! Anyway, the next one's for Gula. The patrons of the ass, Hi, how are you? Oh, I think pretty good. I wish I could enunciate a positive answer, but my current predicament is inordinately ar arduous. Ergo, I'm afraid yet prepared to confirm the reality that I am, in fact, covetous of the middle order situation to say the least. I pray you understand the gravity of being incarcerated within an unknown, vile location and that, that none of their pro proper presence of mind will remain excellent. So you're not doing very well, huh? But that's my fault in a way, since I wrote you into said incarceration. Precisely. So why isn't everyone attacking Miracle Moon right now? <laughs> I would personally have preferred keeping my freedom. The next question is for NVIDIA, but again, but we actually can't answer that one, sorry. Mm. See, it involves characters from other languages, and there's no typography except for those characters and the fonts we're using. <laughs> sorry. 
and said have this picture of Nvidia looking pensive. <laughs> I love this thing too much, and I just realized. Uh, I just going through this to get my just to slowly piece together almost everything that goddamn happened. In the design for this speed this right, I first wanted him to just be hunched over a little, but I also wanted him to have a pose that could let him pick up an object. So this rather so this rather strange, extremely hunched pose came up. I like it though. It's not used as much as the other, sadly. Sad. Yeah, thanks. It's kind of a weird pose altogether, so at least that's that. Okay, for the next question, we have Gula again. Christ! The patron asks, have you made a con conscious con choice to speak in the way you do? Each syllable inf infiltrating my diction con constitutes a, a spontaneous pattern. As much as I recall, I have expressed myself in this specific method ever since I remember. Ever since. <laughs> Just born, hospital bed. Oh, look, at this, it's our little girl. Mother, I require the sustenance. <laughs> That way, it is a negative. It is all completely subconscious thing. If you didn't catch it yet, she's just very verbose because all she had for nighttime literature was a dictionary in multiple parts. My best guess is that she harbored an interest in reading about words when she was young. Your best guess. I believe you to be your creator. You should definitely be aware of our sugar senses. Yeah, but we want up everything else, then we can't we can't write things in or out of your storyline. Well, sometimes characters just come to life and change from what you envisioned for them. Anyway. This question is for you again, and they're asking you, what is your opinion on the dystopian future in The Handmaid's, the Handmaid's Tale? The Handmaid's Tale, that's a... Okay, what is that? Pray do not mistake me for my erudition. I have scarcely obtained the chance to peruse for novels. I have thus never heard of said tale. But regarding that dystopian element, most inhabitants being unable to readily maintain their own agency seems quite regrettable. I really hope those who read this can understand what you're saying. Let's move on to the next one, this time for Luxuria. What kind of interest do you have, like video games? Oh, I like all cute things! Every single cute thing in existence? You better have a gosh dang room in your goddamn house, that. Cute things are the best, don't you think? Ponies and rainbows and leprechauns? Elves and fairies in the Eiffel Tower? The Eiffel Tower is cute. It doesn't matter to me what form they take. If they are cute, it's all that matters. If video games have cute things, then those check out, but I don't normally play them much. When the controllers and the TV screens are not cute enough for you to pick them up and touch? I have many other things to do. And by the way, this snake helmet is not cute. Definitely fitting then. Bleh. Really laying it on thick there with the cute stuff. I can't help it. It's just stronger than me. When I say something cute, I. Well, let's just move on to the next question. This one's for Ira. You do any sport? Oh, nice. Nice. It's my turn. Uh, do I sport? Do I do sport? Um, uh, I do all the sport. Yeah, a little. People would have me, at least. Most people don't want anything to do with me, so uh, they're lost, uh, I could guess. Maybe they know I'd wipe the floor with their face. <laughs> Just between you and me, I kind of want to play hockey someday. Uh, on a pr professional level. Oh, that's nice. But that's just a pipe dream. To make it there, you have to start really young and get good fast. I just will never get the ch chance for it. Especially not with Entine in your head. Yeah, there's that too. At least that means she'll be there in pr All right, that's that one's done. Okay. Oh boy. Wait, if, wait, hold on, wait, hold on. This is, just from that one line alone, if this, even though I know this is not canon, I know it's not, but it just came to the whole gosh dang thing about um, uh, for seven years, you're just running around doing your own thing to like become that, and Serbian Ira, no, not Serbian, yeah, Serbian Ira dating, that technically means you're dating yourself, with remembrance of your old personalities in there. 
That is so weird to think about. That is so goddamn weird. Alright, that one's done. Next one's for Luxuria again. Knock, knock. Wait, that's not a question. Who's there? Oh, you're supposed to answer that, aren't you? Because it's like a joke, right? I guess I ruined it now, but it's not like I can't ask it, then you can answer it. It's the other way around. So, um, you get to see me wave cutely, I guess. <laughs> Actually, that reminds me of something else related to knocking, but I don't think I'm allowed to talk about that. Yeah. No. Shush. Yeah, let's not talk about it. Please stay strictly to what's being asked, since they're going through a small screening process to ensure we're not getting you guys asked unsavory stuff. Good. Good. But anime waifu got in. <laughs> Oops. Sorry. Next up is Adorita. They're asking you, so how are things at work? At work? <sighs> Don't tell me about it. I really can't stand it, but you had to earn your pay, right? If I could, I'd just leave it all behind and let them handle themselves on their own, little. I didn't sign up to be some kind of kind of kindergarten manager. But it's really just more of the same, all things considered. So it's really not that bad, I guess. You'd think those kids would have learned to do their assignments on time, at least. And on to the next. I'm sorry if I move fast, I just want to make sure we go through all of them before we run out of space in this segment. We just run out of data, just out of storage in the game. I don't even think that's a real thing, though. A patron asked her, Mia, why are you like this? Why are you like this? Why do you exist? <laughs> Me again? Fuck off! <laughs> what the fuck? What's your obsession with me? <laughs> what do you mean, like this? Like what? The best? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I know many would like to understand just where my perfection comes from, but I really don't have time to paint anything and explain my entire life story since my birth. Who would I be content with just this, then? I'm perfect because someone, somewhere, is better than you, and everyone else, and that someone happens to be me. Moi. Oh boy. Natural order, really. That means there's someone better than you, then. Have fun with that thought. I'm not sure if that answers the question, but on to the next we have Ghoul Up again. Are you interested in... Uh, let's skip that one, actually. God damn it. You got... Don't tell me some of these Patreon just made so many weird questions. Wow! She gets to skip one and not me? That's bullshit! Listen, you already got more screen time than everyone else so far, so be thankful for that. Next two will be for Tristia. Any tips for workout? I don't think I'm the best guy to answer that question, but from what I was told, a routine exercise is way more important than trying to cram it all at once. Like every other day. That's what my friend told me. What was it? I think I heard, also heard someone say like, "If I do at least like a whole day like rigorous training, the, ne the next day is like for your body to rest." And, like every other, then just repeat that on on random. If someone does something every day, the body will get used to it. And that's our best quality as the human species, really. Adaptability. I've had that same exact thought, adaptability, ever since, like, middle school. I kept trying to put that in, like, like just things I'm interested in. Like, writing stories and such. But you can't just keep doing the same thing. You have to ramp it up. If you start hard, though, it won't help. Don't skip leg day. Never skip leg day, folks. Always make sure you do arm day, and your head day, and your chest day, and your stomach day, and your leg and feet day. Just never skip any of that. And maybe you should skip brain day and exercise day. <laughs> that was also the most important thing, as far as I've been told. The second question. You like Zoro escapism? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I can say the name due to copyright reasons, so I'll just say that. It's a series like the one I'm making. Mm -hmm. My main inspiration, in fact. Yes. It's rare to get to answer this much stuff. I'm sorry, I don't know what that is. Do you mean the Ad Infinity series? 
Oh yeah, I've heard that the Discord too. The first is pretty okay, but it only got good with the second one. Maybe I'll check that out. I scribbled so hard to translate what the characters were saying in real time, so I didn't miss any of the plot. Oh, so you actually will just... Just as you just went full on, play Japanese, the Japanese text game. It just translates go along. I'm very likely I knew this Japanese guy who had a copy or else I would have been screwed. It's not like that kind of thing is popular, so the chances of finding it online are very slim. I, I think I, I, I looked at it on, on a Discord, or well, then I looked at it online. It's an old PS2 game. Maybe I'll find a way how to record those consoles. Well, that would mean I have to get a PS3 that does PS2 games. I already have a set to like record consoles, but mostly been focused on PC because I'm not used to console recording. Like honestly, the program that's used just to make a uh, just record all sorts of things, like a uh, like the the games on Switch and the PS4. I actually don't even know for the PS3 recorder. Yeah, but I'm not used to just a program we to use. Like it was Elgato. The program they had to help me record that is a nightmare to figure out and use. Uh, so maybe someday I'll get into that. It's not like that kind of thing is popular, so the chances of finding it online are very slim. Kind of hard to pull off, even for me. Hoping the third will conclude well. Oh right, you guys know the Infinity Games. It's Ed Infinity for you. Anyway, all the questions are done now, so you guys can rest. Yeah, I know, nothing for Encora, me, or Pandora. Since those questions are public too, I can't put spoilers in them. Also, there's the one from May already in, but I'll leave that for a future update. Oh, should you continue update updating this? Oh, cool! Hope you enjoyed and keep your eyes peeled for additional bonus content in the future. And most of all, thanks for all your support. Patron donations are part of why this game could even exist in the first place. Support the things you love. Huh. I'm guessing these are all the different, all the other bonus questions that can be updated along. But now, how do we get to this? How do we get to that? Everything else has been answered except for this.